right? All right. This is called <laughs> this is called demise of the buffalo, circa 1880. Unable to sleep, Kyle turned on his bedside lamp and sat up. He noticed something very small on the sheet by his arm. At first, he thought it was simply a piece of dust or lint. Everything in his room had a place, and though he was half asleep, he knew that this spot did not belong on his sheet by his arm. Then it moved, barely, and his first instinct was to flatten it. But he hesitated, for it moved so almost imperceptibly, didn't hop or fly, as, didn't hop or fly away as he'd expect an insect would. He squinted and stared as best he could, close up. A flea? Nah, not shiny, and fleas made him itch as soon as he saw one. His cats got them every summer, and this was the middle of winter. Still, though, the speck moved so slowly, again he stared but saw only something alive yet unidentifiable. Closer. Maybe it was a beetle, some minuscule yet unidentifiable insect? Maybe a South American species, perhaps? Or a gnat? Or even a mite? He went for his magnifying glass and turned on the main light in his bedroom because this thing was on his bright, bleached white sheet. It was well contrasted and through the magnifying glass it was very large, defined perfectly and undeniably a buffalo. It kicked a little as if dust would fly in its wake and wagged its tail impatiently. It shook its shaggy mane. Never had Kyle seen a buffalo that would fit under his fingernail, but certainly that's what it was and it turned its head and looked out from its hilly, cotton terrain at Kyle, and he could see its eyes, and he decided that the buffalo was lost. He crushed it between his fingers. It left a tiny wet spot, and he went to wash his hands and have a glass of water. Then he turned off the lights and fell asleep. Thank you.